Hi everybody and welcome to Pinky Tech. If you've been trying to build or upgrade a gaming PC in the last six months to a decade, you'll know that GPU availability is really an oxymoron. There have been no new GPUs available, or at least not available at MSRP. That being said, for those of you who either can't or don't want to wait, I've got five GPUs today on the used market that you can find, and while overpriced, they'll get you through the current shortage until GPUs kind of stabilize, whenever that might be. All right, everybody, so today's video is for those that don't want to wait or can't wait to get a graphics card for their gaming PC. Either you had one fail or you just built a new one. You need something to go into it because you're tired of looking at all the parts sitting in the corner of your room. Now, that being said, these graphics cards are all overpriced compared to what we used to be able to get them for. However, they still got some life in them, can get you some gaming. And well, like I said, it's better than nothing at this point. Now, if you can wait, absolutely, please do that. Wait until you get either you know, called up on the shuffle or your turn comes on the EVGA waiting list, however you're getting the graphics cards. If you can do that, by all means, do that. Get these cards closer to retail. Get the newer cards that will work with the newer technology a bit better, get a little bit more performance and longevity out of them. But for the rest of us, let's get started. All right, so my first graphics card on the list would be the RX 480. Now these are currently selling on eBay for about $150 to $200. Uh, some of them are going for much higher, some of them are going less. Just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, what I did was took a look at the actual sold items on eBay. So these aren't listing prices, these are what they actually sold for. Now this card is good for you know a second, third gen Intel CPU. Um, I would even go up to a 9100F uh, to be honest with you. Uh, basically anything that's kind of that four core range and you'll be able to keep up with that processor. Now this card should be able to play most games out on the market right now. Uh, you can probably go 1080p low settings and still get 60 to 70 FPS with these cards. If not, some of the newer games, maybe a Cyberpunk or something like that, you're probably gonna have to drop down to either 1600 by 900 or even 720p low settings to be able to have a playable experience. Now the second card I have on the list today is the RX 570. Now these are currently going for about 200 to $250 online, and that's for the four gig model. You can also throw in the RX 580 four gig model as they're going for about the same price. Now I know you're saying, hey, I've looked on eBay and RX 570 or an RX 580 is like 300 or $350. And while some of the four gig models are going for that much, a lot of it is actually the eight gig models of these cards that are going for that high. Now keep in mind, this is a great 1080p gaming card. Uh, pretty much any game on the market you can play at 1080p and still achieve over 60 FPS. Of course, you can always drop down the resolution on some of them as well to get over 100 FPS if you want to do that. But a great card overall and one of the ones that I use a lot for flipping. And while yeah, they have gone up because these cards traditionally were around $100, $150. They're now closer to 200, sometimes 225, somewhere in that range. So everything is up right now, expect to pay more, but at least you can game and do some decent gaming with this. If you're looking for CPU recommendations, uh, 10400, uh, 3600, any kind of six core 12 thread CPU would work just fine. And even if you wanted to go something lower, let's say a 10100, the card can keep up with that as well. Now the third card I have on the list is the GTX 1650 or the 1650 Super. These cards are selling for about $300 to $325, which is not a very good value, obviously, because the 1660 MSRP is about $325, depending on the model. But since you can't get one MSRP or they're not available, you're kind of stuck with the 1650. Now you are gonna lose some performance on the 1650 if you do get that model. The 1650 does not require external power, so it is a great option if you're like trying to flip an Optiplex or you have an Optiplex that you've upgraded that you wanna do some gaming on and you can check out my Optiplex videos up, wait, over here, uh, that you can see that you can actually get some good performance out of one of these cards. Now the 1650 Super does require external power, but it does run better. And if you can get that at that 325, 350 range, I would say go ahead and do it. Once again, if you can wait for a newer card, wait for the newer card. All right, so moving up the price tier, the next card on the list is one that I put on there because it is kind of available a bit more, but it's not a real good value. And I'd actually tell you probably not to go for this one if we're being 100% honest and you have other choices. Uh, but this card is the RX 5500 XT. 
Now the card is fine, it could do 1080p gaming, it can do some 1440p gaming. However, it's not very power efficient and it's not as good as the next card on the list that we'll talk about in a moment. That all being said, this card right now is going for about $300 to $400 on eBay. And yeah, it's normally about $200 to $225 if you could find it MSRP. That being said, once again, you're up and running, you're gaming, and you, 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 you're gaming. That's all I can give you on that one. All right, guys, and my last card on the list also goes for about $300 to $400, and that is the GTX 1070. Now this card is a great card. Um, however, about six months ago, it was selling for like $200 used, and that was a good deal on a 1070. But the card itself has plenty of gaming life left in it. 1080p gaming, 1440p gaming. Um, you could pair this card with, a, you know, the A-Core processor, or if you wanted to do the new 5600X from AMD, it would certainly work well with that card as well. Once again, I don't have anything bad to say about the GTX 1070. However, with the 3060s, 3070s, everything else, paying $400 for that card, the only reason you should be doing it is that you have to have a graphics card right now and you just can't wait. That being said, spending three or $400 on a GTX 1070 just feels criminal, but it's probably the best card on the list if you do want some longevity out of the card that you're buying. And maybe when things return to normal, you can sell it for $200 still and make some of your money back. I just wouldn't bank on it. So like I said earlier in the video, guys, if you can wait to get a new graphics card, I would certainly go that route. All the new graphics cards are going to outperform anything on this list, and a lot of them are in a similar price range. That being said, if you can't wait for a graphics card, hopefully this list helped you out. And if it did, make sure you hit the like button. And while you're down there, consider subscribing. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next video.